Say I'm building cabinets and I'm doing the sides of my cabinets. Let's just take, for instance, upper cabinets in the kitchen. Um, what I would do normally, okay, with a, a Festool uh, TS55 and a guide rail is I would take my guide rail, put it along the length of it, uh, my two 1400s put together or the larger uh, single unit, and I would rip a nice clean edge on the edge there, right? And then I, what I would do is I would do 13 inch uppers, sides, and I'd lay this out to 13 inches here, make my mark, take it here, make a mark here, right? And then I would take my guide rail and place it down on there and make my cut. Then I would take that, right? And measure again from that cut 13, measure that cut 13. Now, with my eyes getting older, am I actually gonna have 13 every single time? I could, but what if it's 13 and a scope? 64th, and it differs. It doesn't matter if it's 13 in a 64th or 13 in a 30 seconds, as long as it's the same on every side, okay? And that's what we do with the table saw fins. We take that huge piece of plywood, run it through at 13 inches, run it through again, so all my sides are repetitive to the same. Well, we did this with this unit here, and this is what this basically does. It's an indexing system for the guide rail. Okay, but what this does, I'm going to flip it up here so you guys can see this, nice and easy. Okay, you have this cam lock right here, okay, and you have a, a T-nut that fits in there, and also right here, okay, so it doesn't matter what size guide rail I put this on. As you see, as I slide off, you see I have the T-nut here, and this extrusion locks on the top part here. So when I slide that on, put it up, it doesn't have to be snug against there. Okay. Now, what I have here are two screws. You don't necessarily have to tighten those, but if there's variances in this extrusion, okay, I could take it, take those, tighten them to eliminate the variance on there. Okay. This doesn't guarantee square. What it guarantees is that all my pieces are going to be parallel, the full length. So now we have the right here. Okay, and you see the little notch in there. That's where I line it up on my scale. Right here, you see there's a single point right here? That is the edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up just like this. See the little T-nut? It goes in there like this. And I can slide down. Now, I've been using these for quite some time now. Yes, this is a metric. Big deal. I have a metric calculator. So if I'm doing 13 inch side, I know my metric equivalent, okay, is 330. Okay, so I just do the conversion like this. Now, I want to show you something. See right here? See this little hex right in there? If someone says, hey, this is sliding too much on here, you could take this, loosen it up here, and take a uh, two millimeter hex, put it right here, and tighten it ever so slightly so you have no movement on your rail. Lock it in. Same thing with this one. Slide in here just like this. Hello. Take it down to 330. Right here, if I can see with my eyes. And just lock it in. Now, I could take this unit, make my cut, okay, make the cut, then I could take it to my next piece and do the cut. All my sides are going to be 330 millimeter, no matter what I have a square box is what I'm getting at, top, bottom. Now, the cool thing about this is I'm not moving a big sheet good in and out of my fence. I'm just going, oh, boom, 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 down that sheet good. I don't have to move it into the lumber rack, move it on my cheater table, through the saw. I can do it all right there. And it's precise, accurate, dead on every time. That's if I want cuts all the way to 26 inches wide. Okay, but what if I'm doing thin strips? Less than seven and a half. Then we have these, which are the extensions. Okay. Just like this. Got a little scale right here. Got a hole here. You got a knob. So when I line those up, whoopsie, the other way. You always got to make the scale sure the scale is on the inside. You just register it like this. It's simple. Just spin it on like that. Grab another one here. Slide it on just like this. Just like this. 
So then I can take that. And now I can cut thin strips. And that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so a couple things I like to do right from the get-go. All right, you see this? I have this labeled B. This is my B saw, okay? Uh, I believe I've been using this saw for this application, but I want to tune it. I want to calibrate it to my guides. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this index right here, and I'm going to slide it on till it reads zero. I like to start with zero because I'm going to show you a quick an easy way to calibrate this. See that? And lock it in at zero. Okay, just like that. And then I'm going to take this and lock it in at zero. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this saw. What I like about this saw is I can do what? Lock it right in, can I? And I'm going to take it just like this. Okay, and then I'm going to take a pen or a pencil. I'm going to do this because I always like to do this, guys. I always like to make sure that I am taking it and using the same tooth. So I'm going to mark that tooth so I use the exact same one every time. And I'm going to use that. I put a little X right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide that in. And when X hits that, which it is, okay, I know it's dead on to that mark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to the next one. And remember that tooth I had, where are you, X, right there. Ooh, see how that's a little tight? Wow. See how it's a little tight right there? So what I'm going to do is right in here, I always have a tool on board on my saw, right? And that's reading zero. Look, see this right here? I loosen it here. I loosen it here. So I have plenty of room. So I'm calibrating, right? I take it and I move it right to X. Where are you, X? There you are right there. Pretty cool, huh? So that guarantees from point A to point B, I'm dead on accurate. By the way, once you tune this in, you're good. And that's my calibration. Calibrated here, calibrated here. So I'm ready to cut. So now I just have to do what? Decide what my cut's going to be. So what I like to do is I like to take 10 millimeter cuts right here, right here, line up a 10 millimeter. So like cut. This. I like to just set it down about 30 mil. Okay, now what I'm going to do is there's one piece. Okay, now what I'm going to do is take it to the next piece. See how quick that is? All right. Take another cut. Let's see this piece here. Now, come over here and feel this. Look how perfect that is, guys. Remember I told you? Come over here and feel this. It's absolutely perfect. See this? Isn't that neat? That's how it works. And it's like that every single cut. Now I've compensated by calibrating 2.2 for the curve of the blade, every blade, and I get a perfect cut. That's how that works. Now, what if from this scale here is not dead on? See this right here, that little screw right there? I can recalibrate it for that as well. I just loosen this and I have a little bit of play in here, calibrated by taking my stock here at 400 and bringing a tape right to the edge here of my guide rail. Pretty cool.